Our government is currently in high-level negotiations pertaining to a visit to Canada by the American president. The Americans are an important, if somewhat unruly, ally of ours. So we must be vigilant. We are vigilant. Really? Oh, good. Good, good, good. You must be keeping close tabs on the anarchist attack on Dunbar Market. That bombing was no simple dispute between two shopkeepers. It was the first strike against us. By whom? Anarchists, Murdoch. It would appear our country has now joined the war on terror. Shine, motherfuckers. I am your host, The Stimulator, and this is the fucking news. We're just trying to get out of Portland right now. There's only about 10 of us right now, and there's about 50 of them following us. They're throwing, like, like hardcore bricks, sharp bricks at us. God damn it. We're all alone. This past week has been a mixed bag for anarchists across Turtle Island, as repression has ramped up against comrades in Canada, and the J-20 case in D.C. has started to crack. In the United Snakes, the U.S. Attorney's Office was caught with their hand in the alt-right shit bowl after they were found to have knowingly kept a fuck ton of video and audio footage from the defense. Turns out the motherfucking state, in cahoots with the disgraced far-right shit spinners at Project Veritas, even edited some footage as part of their batshit crusade to throw J-20 defendants in the clink for up to 60 fucking years. Oh, hell no! But comrades on the ground and lawyers in the courts have been busting ass for the past year and a half. And once they found out that the gov was holding back evidence, they called that shit out hard. Did you eat poop today, Fano? Did you eat poop? Pressing the judge to throw out the charges for several trial blocks. While dozens of peeps are still facing charges, the future looks bright for the majority of these comrades' cases to get dropped especially those based on conspiracy. Be sure to follow the Unicorn Riot and Defend J20 on Twitter for up-to-the-minute updates. But we should also keep in mind that peeps who threw the fuck down in Stanley Rock are starting to receive sentences and are also in need of serious fucking support. Last week, Michael Littlefeather Giron was sentenced to 36 months and many more no dapple water protectors are set to go before a judge soon. And to top it off, black liberation protesters in Charlotte, North Carolina and Ferguson, Missouri are also facing trumped up charges and long prison sentences. Meanwhile, anti-anarchist repression in Canada has been heating up, especially as protests to the G7 get closer, and the pigs are attempting to scare people off the streets. As we reported last month about the arrest of a solid anarchist comrade Cedar in the wake of an anti-gentrification march in which a yuppie business district was smashed the fuck up. This is a disaster. Who's going to pay for my losses? Well, not the constabulary. Well. Over the past week, police have ramped up the repression, arresting six comrades, even nabbing one person off the street in Montreal and flying them to Hamilton in cuffs. Hack politicians, the media, and the cops have seized on this moment of anti-anarchist hysteria, even going so far to declare the anarchist Circle A as a hate symbol. That's not what a hate crime is. Well, I hated it! To make matters worse, the Hammer City 5-0 finally managed to shut down the tower. Oh, come on! The main anarchist social center in Hamilton after pressuring their landlord to evict them from the space. These greasy fucking pigs did this by citing numerous recent fire right attacks against the building and ominously warning that if the tower was allowed to stay, these attacks would only continue. Not on me, not tonight. Not on me, not tonight. Not tonight. But the rat motherfuckers who run the tower would not be so easily fucking deterred. And despite the ongoing wave of repression, they recently announced that they found a new and better space, which will be opening its doors soon. Stay tuned for that. As gentrification continues to price broke peeps out of their homes, while yuppies are gangsta chilling on goat cheese, <coughs> the so-called Lock Street Riot has been used as an excuse for a wide-ranging crackdown on peeps who are fighting back in the ramping up of their repressive apparatus to respond to a few broken windows. We see the real face of the state come out. The growth of real estate market that drives out poor and working class peeps must be protected at all costs, meaning all those that stand in the way need to be demonized as dangerous outsiders, hell bent on kicking puppies and stabbing grandmas. As anarchists, we know that the state is responsible for far worse horrors than we could even imagine, from genocide and the theft of land 
to the continued management of this industrial capitalist clusterfuck. Let's keep that in mind as we stand behind comrades facing repression on both sides of the border. Check out the show notes at sup.media slash tfn for links on how to stay up with comrades in Hamilton. And that's all the fucking news for today. Wanna let your motherfuckers know that there's a new edition of Burning Cop Car out now. Just go to sup.media slash bcc. Don't forget to support my raging taco habit at sup.media slash donate or buy a t-shirt or a coffee cup with my face on it or a brand new bolt cutter t-shirt at sub.media slash gear. And remember to follow me on all your mass surveillance and mind control platforms. Just search for Stimulator. Hasta la pasta, compañeras.